What has Amazon done in other industries? Well, they've, they've brought selection, they've brought convenience, they've brought personalization, they've brought reliability, and great prices. And so as a consumer, we all love those things. Uh, and so when Amazon brought that to grocery, it's really challenging you know, the traditional grocery model in ways that folks hadn't been challenged before. The grocery's been slow to adopt the e-commerce because it's hard. Uh, it's a lot easier to ship a book than it is to ship you know, fresh lettuce or, or milk. And so it's been one of those areas that just hasn't gotten the same amount of attention just given the difficulty of it. Plus, if you think about it, you've got 30,000 to 50,000 SKUs in a grocery store. Making all those available online and having the ability to deliver product across to a radius is really hard. To so keep up with the technological investments you need in order to compete with Amazon, to compete with some of the larger players in this field, you're going to have to invest. You're going to have to invest in e-commerce infrastructure, you're going to have to invest in you know, having the personalization engine, you're going to have to invest in logistics. Uh, and those are, those are really big investments. For grocery retailers, it may seem almost like an insurmountable hurdle to compete with a, a behemoth like Amazon. But the reality is, is they have a number of natural advantages that they can further exploit. You know, first and foremost is for the consumer that likes to shop and wants to touch and feel the goods, uh, they can win there. Um, and one of the big ways they can win is on the perimeter. So you think about their bakery department, their meat department, their produce department, their deli, their dairy, their seafood. Investing in those areas that are truly differentiated and hard to deliver in an in a, in a economical and consumer-pleasing way online is a great opportunity. For food manufacturers, in many respects, it does present a great opportunity uh, because they're able to reach new consumers in ways they hadn't in the past but also presents a number of threats, threats to the traditional business model. You know, specifically, if you're trying to do impulse aisle, uh, and if your products are largely living on the impulse shelf, meaning at checkout at the register, in the digital world, that challenges your ability to do that. Uh, so they have to really think through where there's opportunity and threat. The other big threat is, what are what is Amazon gonna do with private label? Uh, and how are they gonna promote maybe other brands? Uh, niche brands that you're competing with. And so having a sophisticated approach for how you want to deal with channel conflict, for how you want to manage your price pack architecture across the different channels is critical. Thinking about your innovation strategy, how you're going to think about the next generation of consumers, how you're going to segment their need states, their demand spaces, and bringing, that, bringing an offering to them uh, will be critical to win. For the consumer, we're winning. We're having more opportunity to experience and enjoy groceries in ways we never dreamed of. We can get food anywhere, any place, any time. And for food manufacturers and grocery retailers alike, this creates a lot of opportunity, but a number of threats to their business. Uh, we think e-commerce is gonna grow from 2% to 20% of the grocery landscape. Billions of dollars will be created and shifted and moved to this landscape. Having a well thought out approach for how you're gonna engage consumers, the kind of products, services, pricing that you need to win is gonna be critical.